Razorback Athletics. Uh, reminder that after the uh, formal remarks, we will have a moderated Q&A uh, where we'll pass the microphone around and uh, take your questions. But at this time, I'd like to introduce the Chancellor of the University of Arkansas, Mr. Joseph Simons. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, thank you all for coming out today, uh, particularly when it's been a relatively short notice to get people out here. But um, I think it's been a really exciting week for us and for the entire state as we've now hired a new athletic director and we are very close to hiring a new head football coach as well. Um, and I know one thing is that the interest and the passion exhibited throughout this process by our alumni, our friends and all of the Razorback fans around the, the country and in the state has been simply amazing. We know the Razorbacks not only represent the University of Arkansas, we know the Razorbacks represent our entire state. So I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the newest members of our Razorback family, and I want to start especially with Mrs. Yurachek, who's here. Welcome. Jennifer, you're going to love it here. I can promise you that, and I, have that, I know that from firsthand experience. Sandy and I came here just two years ago and have found Fayetteville and the whole state of Arkansas an amazing, quite amazing place to be. And before I introduce our new Vice Chancellor and Director of Athletics, I'd like to thank all who provided input during the search process, including most notably the advisory committee we assembled to help prioritize the characteristics we found to be most important for us in a new athletic director, and also to discuss the candidates that might be the best fit for us. And that group included Ben Heineman, Bill Montgomery, Rick Massey, Stacy Lewis, Peter McKeith, uh, Lance Harder, and Gerald Jordan. And I also want to take at this time for a special thank you to Julie Cromer Peoples for stepping up during this very challenging time as our interim director of athletics. And we all owe Julie a great debt of gratitude. She's done a marvelous job in this role over the past couple of weeks. So thank you, Julie. <laughs> and ultimately, we found an extraordinary count, uh, candidate who matched what we wanted in an AD. First of all, he has previous experience leading two collegiate athletic programs and has success doing so. He cares about the success of student athletes in every phase of their lives, not only on the court and in the field, but also as they relate to the community and in their studies. He has a proven track record of making smart coaching hires and maintaining those all important relationships with those coaches. He's someone that others across the nation point to as one of the best, a true leader with a vision for the future. And most importantly, and this was personally important to me, he understands what an amazing situation we have here in Arkansas, what the Razorbacks mean to our state, and the opportunity there is here to take this program to even greater and new heights. We found that guy. In fact, it's also the fact that being a former FCS Athletic Director of the Year didn't hurt his chances here either. So I'm thrilled now to officially introduce our next Razorback Athletics Director, Hunter Yurichek. Well, thank you. It is, um, it is an honor and a privilege to be sitting here today as the new Vice Chancellor and Director of Athletics at the University of Arkansas. I just had a, a, a meeting, brief meeting with the entire athletic department staff. Uh, they taught me how to call the hogs, is that correct? I'm at the end of that meeting and I am so excited uh, to get started here and get my feet on the ground and get rolling as a director of athletics. Uh, a few thank yous. I want to thank uh, Chancellor Steinmetz for this opportunity, for having the faith and the belief and the confidence um, in Hunter Yurichek as the next leader of this athletic department in a very critical time uh, for the University of Arkansas. I want to also thank members of uh, the Chancellor's Advisory Committee for this search and the Arkansas System Board of Regents for also having the confidence in the recommendation of Chancellor Steinmetz for me to be the leader of this athletic program. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't turn real quickly and say thank you to a number of 
folks at the University of Houston. Uh, first and foremost, our university president, Dr. Renu Couture, and the chairman of our board of regents, Mr. Tillman Fertitta, who gave me an unbelievable opportunity to be the director of athletics at the University of Houston three years ago. And without that opportunity and the success we had had, I would not be sitting here today. I also uh, recognize that we did not have the success at the University of Houston without an unbelievable group of people, our coaches, our administrative staff, our support staff, and our university faculty. And I want to thank the entire University of Houston community for how they worked under my leadership and the great accomplishments that we had while I was there. I'd also like to thank the number of friends across the country that in the last 48 hours have reached out to Jennifer and myself with, with well wishes and also to tell us the wonderful place that is Fayetteville, Arkansas and the University of Arkansas and made it so easy for me to sell this to Jennifer and sell this to my children as well as a great place to, to move our family. A little about me real quickly. Um, you can put me in a nutshell with three passions in my life my faith, my family, and college athletics. I've been blessed with three wonderful boys, and I hate that they cannot be here today. Ryan, my oldest son, is a senior student athlete tied in at Marshall University. He's in final exams and preparing for the New Mexico Bowl next week. Our middle son, Jake, is also in the middle of high school final exams, and uh, he's got a very important banquet to attend tonight. And then um, our 13-year-old, our new teenager, who's getting a little bit of an attitude with dad now, uh, but uh, he's got a very important junior high basketball game tonight, correct? Um, and then I'm not here today uh, without the support of my lovely wife, Jennifer. Jennifer, will you please stand up? Um, she, she's never complained about a move. Uh, she's taken every home that we've purchased and every house we've purchased and made it a home. And she has done an amazing job uh, raising our boys uh, when I couldn't be there because of the, the taxing nature of this profession sometimes. As I mentioned, it, it's an honor to be in this position to serve as the Vice Chancellor and Director of Athletics and to embrace the history, the heritage, and tradition of Razorback Athletics that includes countless conference championships, national championships, bowl games, Final Four appearances, Olympic medalist student athletes, and incredible leaders such as Frank Broyles. This is truly a special, special place. I think most of you are aware by now that I am not from Arkansas and I have very few ties to the state. But I will tell you I am a quick study. Right now I have very few answers and so many questions. I'm going to ask those questions to a number of people and listen intently and gain a complete understanding of the culture here at the University of Arkansas and across this great state. My life, both professional and personal, will quickly adapt to this culture. I promise you, each and every one of you across this state, that my family and I are going to become engrossed in this community and this state and be a come, become a part of its fabric. I know I will never be a true Arkansian, but my goal is that I will earn the right to be an honorary member someday soon. I'm a true believer that the Department of Athletics is indeed a front porch at most major universities. Being the front porch does not mean it's the most important room in the house but it is indeed the most visible room of the house. It provides a first impression. It provides a great sense of pride for all its constituents. The Razorback Athletic Program, the front porch of the University of Arkansas, will be a sense of pride for this community and for this state. And will do so through the success of our student athletes. I truly believe it is my role as a director of athletics to work with our coaches, to work with our administrators, to work with our support staff and our faculty to create opportunities for each and every one of our student athletes to have success academically, which means earning a degree from the University of Arkansas, athletically, which means competing and winning conference and national championships in their personal, and in their personal development so that they leave the University of Arkansas ready to conquer the world. When our student athletes at the University of Arkansas have success academically, athletically, and in their personal development, our coaches will have success, our department will have success, the university will experience success and its front porch will indeed be a great sense of pride across the state of Arkansas. 
A vision not to be good, but rather to be the best is obtainable here at the University of Arkansas. Razorback fans, it's time for us to gather our fellow alums, our neighbors, our business associates, and our friends from across the state and step up onto the front porch at the University of Arkansas. I promise you it's a big front porch. There's room for everybody. I also promise you that the journey we're about to embark on together as a Razorback family will be like no other journey you've experienced before. Yes, like any tight-knit family, there'll be times when we disagree and just don't see eye to eye. But like any great family, we'll put our differences aside and forge ahead together as Razorbacks with one common goal in mind, and that's the success of our student athletes. An era of unprecedented success is about to kick off at the University of Arkansas, and we need to come together now more than ever. Dr. Steinmetz, once again, thank you for this opportunity. I embrace this challenge and promise you that the best days lie ahead of us. Go Hogs. All right, thank you. We will now uh, take some questions. Again, we ask you to raise your hand. Please give your name and affiliation. And uh, we'll start here with uh, Tom Murphy. Tom. Hi, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette for Hunter, please. I uh, understand you have a pretty famous 100-day plan. I'd like to know if, if you presented something to the chancellor in your interview process. And secondly, what role did you play in the hiring of the new football coach, if you could tell us, please? Sure. Uh, to, Tom, thank you for the question. And to address your first one, um, I do have a 100-day plan, and I did present that to the chancellor uh, during the course of our time together. Uh, that 100-day plan, it, it really engages me in the university community, the Fayetteville and surrounding community, and across this state uh, during my first 100 days. Uh, my involvement. Um, in the search process for the football coach has really been uh, being a resource to Julie as she led this search. Um, you know, it's been 36 hours uh, since I was officially hired as a director of athletics. It's hard for me to jump headfirst into a search. And uh, as the chancellor mentioned, Julie has done an unbelievable job uh, with this search process. And really what I became for her was a, a resource during the last 36 hours. Okay, we'll go over here on our left to Bob Holt. Bob. Thanks. Hey, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, for both of y'all, was the interview on Saturday? I understand Stacy Lewis was there. Was it kind of weird because your basketball team's playing his basketball team and your basketball team beat his basketball team pr pr pretty, pretty soundly? And <laughs> how, how did that impact things? So, so, so I, I, I'll take that uh, uh, first. Uh, uh, when I called Hunter to uh, let him know that he was my choice. Uh, the first thing he asked me is the job still available since we they beat us. So I, I told him yes. The answer was um, uh, it turned out that um, I had been on my schedule to be at the at in Houston for that game, for, and it's been on my schedule for the last couple of months. We did a service project as the alumni association group from Houston organized. Then we had a big, uh, very big gathering, and then then the game. So um, I was able to um, uh, d do an interview that morning with Hunter when I was in Houston. It, it worked out perfectly. And, and yes, uh, Stacy Lewis, who's also from Houston, was with me. So it, it worked out. The timing was great for that to come together. And Tom, I just talked to Coach Anderson. I said, I went from Saturday, that being a great win, to today, that being a bad loss. <laughs> All right, Anna Kay, if we can get one here to the second row, Kurt in the middle first. Kurt Voigt. Hey, Hunter, Kurt Voigt, Associated Press. Two quick questions. Um, the first is, I, I know you said you're going to kind of ease your way into things as far as making decisions, but during the process um, or immediately after being hired, were you given a mandate um, for how to approach or handle games, the future of games post-2018 in Little Rock? And then secondly, on, on a big picture, how do, you, how do you feel like Arkansas football fits in the SEC? I'm going to let the chancellor answer the, the question about Little Rock. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just start there. We have not had a, a conversation. I've been engaged in conversation for probably six to eight months about the issue and have uh, just recently met with some folks from Little Rock to, to talk about what we're doing. So we're still working through that. Hunter and I have not had the opportunity to sit down and, and go through the whole uh, situation with the entire briefing. So we haven't done that yet. In, in the second half of your question, I'm sorry. 
uh, fits very well. Um, we're going to hire, and uh, we're in the process of hiring the right football coach, and I think you're going to see great things for our football program. But, uh, I mean, the SEC West is the toughest division in college football, bar none. Um, and it's very important that uh, we get the coaching search right and hire the right person to lead our football program into the future. And I think we are on the brink of doing that. And uh, Arkansas fits very well in the Southeastern Conference. Okay, we'll go back over here on the left. Grant, you have a question? All right, or Trey, go ahead, Hi, Grant. Grant Hall, 99.5 Hog Radio. Uh, could, uh, Chancellor, you talk a little bit more about Stacy Lewis's input and uh, where you first got the idea that this uh, man is a great athletic director? Yeah, so, so just to back up about the process and just say a few words about it is uh, this process began a few weeks back by um, talk, I, myself talking to many people around the country, uh, other ADs, other presidents, other uh, sports consultants, et cetera, of, of who should be on the top list. And from that, I gathered a list of about 50 individuals um, to, to start to take a look and, and to vet. Uh, Hunter's name came up probably more frequently than any other name for that list at that time. I formed the search committee at that time, and it, and it turned out that uh, uh, Stacy, we were looking for former athletes to be on, on that, uh, as well as uh, that committee was composed of, uh, of some campus uh, input from uh, Dean McKeith. We had uh, Gerald Jordan to represent the students' interest on it, some people from the business community, et cetera. So it was wide-based to take a look at and help vet the list that I'd come up with by looking um, at all these other sources. So Hunter's name was actually on this list before the committee was even formed. And then it turned out that with uh, Stacy uh, being, first of all, in Houston, and second of all, having a spouse who uh, it, uh, led the golf program under Hunter, there was this other uh, input then that uh, was very valuable into uh, vetting the candidate for the committee. And so uh, she was very, very valuable valuable in the end to uh, help us to, to decide if Hunter was the right person. So I'm really indebted to, to Stacy for that. She stepped up and did a fantastic job for us. Alan, Nate Allen, Sports Service. Uh, Chance, I was wondering if, if uh, Jeff Long had any input or advice into the search and also uh, for Hunter, did you talk to Jeff about this job and, and uh, get any input from him? So the answer is no. Um, I didn't consult with Jeff uh, for names for this search. And, and no, I did not uh, reach out to Jeff. Um, I've got a number of other colleagues across the, the country uh, that have a better relationship with, with Jeff and uh, were able to fill me in uh, here at uh, what the happenings at the University of Arkansas, but Jeff and I have not spoken. Okay, we'll go down here on our left. Trey? Uh, yes, Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. I, I was just curious what your level of familiarity with Arkansas is. Have you been to Fayetteville before? And and also just a little background. Uh, your bio says you're from Richmond. Is that where you were raised? And your extended family, or, or, or are you from somewhere else? Or no. Um, so no, this is my first trip to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, I've been to Harding University. I believe that's a correct. Uh, and one time uh, in a visit to Arkansas, but this is my second trip to Arkansas. I was uh, born in Richmond, Virginia. My dad was transferred to Charlotte, North Carolina in the eighth grade. The majority of my family uh, lives in the Charlotte area, and uh, Jennifer, Jennifer's family lives in Brevard and Greensboro, North Carolina. So um, this business has taken me all over the country. Um, we have gone from uh, Wake Forest to Vanderbilt to Akron, Ohio, to Coastal Carolina, um, on the coast of Myrtle Beach to Houston, Texas, and um, you know, one of the things Jennifer and I have really prided ourselves on is really getting engrossed in, in whatever community uh, we were a part of. If it was at the beach, you know, we were out to, we had jet skis living on the water, and now we're in Houston, Texas, and I own a good pair of boots and a hat, and I go to the rodeo. And so, um, you know, we, we feel like we will do the same thing here in Arkansas, and Jennifer and I will become, like I said earlier, part of the fabric of this community. All right, we'll go over here to the right, Bo. In the middle here, Hunter, uh, welcome to Arkansas. Thank you. Bo Mattingly from Sports Talk. What is your sense coming into the job beyond just generally what, what an athletic director would do? What is your sense on what Arkansas needs right now? 
Well, there's, there's been a great foundation set um, here at Arkansas, great facilities um, from what the people I have talked to, great people within the athletic program, great coaches, um, great support from a budgetary standpoint from our donors and constituents. And uh, really what we need is we need a football program that competes for championships in the Southeastern Conference. Um, that's what drives the train. Um, it really does it, what drives your revenue. That's what creates that brand perception that you need. We have other very, very competitive, uh, nationally competitive sports here at the University of Arkansas, but for our program, uh, entire athletic program to be successful year in and year out, we need our football program to be successful year in and year out, not only in the Southeastern Conference, but nationally. Okay, we'll go here in the second row, Tom. Yep, Tom Murphy, uh, Chancellor Steinmetz. Um, you mentioned a pool of about 50 names that you started with. Could you could you tell us um, how many the firm vetted for you guys and what maybe a list of finalists and how many you talked to, you interviewed? <laughs> so so uh, uh, we, we, the initial 50 list did not come from the search firm. It came from hard work done by a, a lot of people and um, that I know and, and uh, uh, that, that, that worked on some from the advisory committee once we had it. So I'd say the process was, in, and I want to stay in very general terms, I will not talk about individual candidates that were in the pool, um, but it was a, a process of going from that 50 to perhaps 20 or so in the discussions with the committee where, where there was a fit, and some of them eliminated because it was very likely they weren't going to leave the places that, that they were at. Uh, from all kinds of conferences, all kinds of from power five sitting ads to to uh, to, to other uh, individuals, and then uh, from that uh, the, after committee discussion about the, the pluses and minuses of that larger list, cut the list down to what what is about seven I believe was it, it we ended up with, and then from that there emerged uh, I use this is when the search uh, firm came in because I needed the search firm to make the contacts with what that the list of finalists and also asked them by the way at the time if they had other names and it turns out the names that they had we had already had and had in the process um, but they were very helpful at that point um, uh, moving us forward with making the contacts and also doing the background checks and the vetting that's necessary that that we're not uh, we, we can't do and so from that they made Made contact with, I believe, seven or eight. I, can't, I think it was uh, seven or eight, and and three were not interested. Me meaning they were in positions that they didn't want to move from, and the, and they didn't want to uh, continue on. That left five. I telephoned the five and had extensive uh, conversations with those five, and then reduced that to four, and then went and personally visited th those four. And um, I, I consider that four to, those four to, to be like the final list, list that we had. And in those interviews, I took uh, members of the, uh, of the advisory committee with me um, to, uh, to help uh, with, with that process. And uh, that's when, for example, Stacy Lewis was the one that was in on, on Hunter's interview. And then f from that, um, I, I uh, came up with the final uh, choice. Okay, we'll go back here to Mitch on the left side. Hi, Hunter. Mitch Roberts with 4029 Sports. Um, given you mentioned driving the train, and football is, is what does that here and at Houston, uh, knowing that, how comfortable are you coming in and not having that much of a hand in who the football coach is going to be, given how important it is? Uh, I think you'll find out in the very near future I am very comfortable, very comfortable. We're heading in the right direction as a football program. Okay, we'll go stay on the same side, Bob. Hunter, uh, could you just talk maybe some specifics about your 100-day plan? What what things do you think need to happen in your first three three months and t 10 days, I guess, on the job? And when you were, went to Harding, wh wh where, where were you working then? you remember what year it was and what was the circumstance? I, I was a member of a – I'll answer the last question first. When I went to Harding, I was just a member of an NCAA Sportsmanship and Ethical Conduct Committee, and I was presenting an award to a student athlete on their campus. And so – I was part of an award ceremony they were having on their on their campus, uh, serving um, on an NCAA committee. Um, as far as a 100-day plan goes, um, it, it really engages me into the university uh, community, the Fayetteville community, the region, and the state. Uh, me getting around, um, asking questions of hundreds of people, listening, 
intentionally in learning about the culture here um, at this university, within our athletic program, within this community, and within the state. And that, that's really, really important. I mentioned uh, I'm not from um, the state of Arkansas. I have very few ties to the state of Arkansas. I have to spend that first 100 days really listening and learning uh, before I develop any other plans uh, for our athletic program. Okay, we have time for three more. We'll start with Josh here on the... Okay. Wow. Josh Bertuccini, 92 on the ticket. This one would be for both you gentlemen, maybe you first, Chancellor. The exciting stadium renovation right now, a lot of possibilities, including things that can be done on game day. Chancellor, how much did, did, uh, did Eurocheck's experience with stadium renovations and refurbishings factor into this? And then maybe any possibilities out of you? Uh, Mr. Yurichek. Josh, great, great question because um, one of the, the facilities is a, is a big issue in, in being competitive and in, in having the best facilities. And in Hunter's background, both at Coastal Carolina as well as Houston, is great progress have been made in, um, in two, two areas. One, fundraising for the pay, to pay for the improvements in the, in the facilities, and second of all, getting the facility improvements done. And I think the number might be something like 250 million at Houston or something like that. That's current, if I remember the number right, that's currently underway in, in renovation. So um, keeping updated is, is extremely important, particularly in the SEC, because it is a very, very competitive uh, conference, not only in competition, but also in the facilities that are available. So having somebody that has managed this somewhere very, very successfully is, uh, was, was a very big priority as well. So thanks. Right in the middle. Yep. Oh, okay. sure. Sure. Um, obviously, I'm very excited to be a part of the, the finishing of the end zone uh, project. I mean, that's a facility that's been uh, designed and, and the money has been set aside within the athletic department budget to, to pay for the debt service on that building. But I think my experience in being a part of a two, uh, of $230 million is the exact number of uh, facility, um, either new projects or enhancements at the University of Houston over the past four years of my time there. That included a $125 million football stadium, a $25 million basketball practice facility, a $20 million end zone football practice facility, and a currently uh, we're undergoing a $60 million renovation to the basketball facility there at the University of Houston. So, uh, you know, I've walked through a lot of facilities under construction. I've been a part of getting those to the finish line. And so I look forward to touring that facility and looking at the plans and seeing if there's any way I can, you know, maybe put a, a touch or two on there from some of the experience I have with the facilities at, at Houston and at Coastal Carolina University. Thank you. All right, we'll head over to the middle. Hi, Mayor Dhamma, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. For the chancellor, what feedback during the search did you get from the Board of Trustees? How would you compare and contrast that with the role of the Search Advisory Committee? And then uh, for, for both gentlemen, the uh, tax bill proposal at the federal level, there's uh, been discussion about how that might influence giving to athletics. Uh, what are your, do you have any thoughts about that? legislation and how that might affect Razorback Athletics? It's to, to answer the first part about the involvement of the Board of Trustees. So, well, first of all, Ben Heineman was one of the uh, committee members, but he didn't serve as a role as a representative of the board, but more or less uh, somebody that has a passion for Razorback Athletics and a passion for the university. So he was an in invaluable. There were no updates to the board um, in any formal sense during the process until I was ready for the selection itself. And, it, and um, as you know, the board went into executive session on Thursday with a number of matters and then called me for an, they, were, they wanted an update at that point of the two searches. But what I was able to do is it was that morning I'd had the conversation with Hunter at eight o'clock, said, you're, you're the guy and uh, was a happily was able to pr um, present that to the board then um, during, during that call with all the logic and the reasoning um, behind why, um, why Hunter was the right person. And at the same time was able to um, talk about the process and, and, um, and how we arrived at, uh, at, at that conclusion. Um, uh, and uh, with the tax bill, um, I have been um, in communication with our state delegation, both the uh, senators and, 
and state representatives about the impact that that has on the university in general. And it's not the only part of the tax bill, by the way. I've been in communication with them about the, particularly about the tax that's being included in there on, on fee waivers for graduate students, which I think will devastate graduate programs across the country. So um, I, I think left in it, of course, has a negative effect on both of those uh, issues. So uh, from our preference, we'd certainly like to see those uh, removed or out of the final bill that's passed. All right, we'll take one final question over here, Paul. Paul Gatling with the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. Uh, Hunter, you graduated college in 1990, and then if you've pretty much spent your entire adult life working in college athletics, college administration. So you, you remember a time when there was no TV revenue, no TV contracts, no football coaches making $75 million guaranteed for 10 years. And we've really seen, we see it more every year, but really this year the, the number of buyouts and guaranteed money and the, the multi-million dollar contracts are becoming more and more prevalent. So my question to you is uh, just kind of what your opinion is on where you see the, the college athletics universe being 20 years from now. Is this a sustainable uh, path that we're on? Absolutely not. I don't think at any level. I mean, I, I have been at uh, you know, Coastal Carolina at the FCS level and then recently at the University of Houston. We had a 30 and $45 million budget, respectively, at those two institutions. Um, and they're competing at the same level now at, uh, with all these teams in the SEC. I spent some time in the SEC back in uh, 1998, 99, 2000 at Vanderbilt. It is a totally different SEC than it was uh, back then. And uh, we, we've got to get a handle on uh, coaches' contracts and the buyouts. And um, I'm adamant to the majority to me, uh, losing football games is being terminated with cause and the protection sometimes that coaches are provided within their contracts um, to me is ludicrous. And, um, you know, I, I want to be a, a leader in this industry and in how we write our, our, our coaches contracts uh, moving forward so that there's not 100 percent guaranteed protection for their contracts. Yes, coaches need some protection. Uh, they're moving their families to a community, um, especially the expectations are so incredible incredibly high, especially in this conference in the Power Five, that coaches deserve some protection. Uh, but for uh, some of the likes of Kevin Sumlin to get paid 100% of his contract, $10 million, I think uh, and that's, that was a mistake. I'm not at Texas A&M, but uh, and, and I know they're in our conference and we compete with them and they'll probably hold that against me for telling them, but that, that's a mistake in our industry. And uh, we, it, it's not a sustainable model uh, moving forward. You just look at the growth in the past 20 years, think 20 years from now. All right, thank you, Chancellor Steinmetz, Vice Chancellor Yurchek, and appreciate everyone being here today.